This is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have a very special treat for you. We're going to answer the question, what is blender cavitation? It's very simple. Blender cavitation is when there's a cavity forms, or you can think of it maybe a cavern forms, in your blender craft. So what happens is there'll be like smoothie or liquid or solid pieces on top and solid pieces all around the blade, but the blade will be spinning freely inside and your blender is going to appear not to be working and actually may even appear not to be working properly because it's not blending, it's just stop blending, it's making a sound, but nothing's happening. What's going on? Well, in most cases you probably have blender cavitation and what that means is it, you could solve it one very simple way. Add more liquids. The very simple fix is to add more liquids. After all, you just bought, after all, a blender, whether it's the Blendtec, a Vitamix, or even a household blender, is meant for blending liquids and it's not meant for solids you know like leaves if you want to you know blend up solids you know more effectively and get a liquid then I would recommend a juicer and not a blender I have a really good episode on uh, comparing juicers and blenders and what the differences are basically the juicers take out all the juice the blenders give you what Vitamix would have you believe a total juice the total juice is nothing more or less than baby food or mush because it blends up all the liquid and all the fiber into one. So each of these blenders, whether it's the Blendtec or the Vitamix, have different features to basically prevent cavitation from occurring. So I guess first we'll start with the Blendtec. <clears throat> the Blendtec, as you can see in here, has a propeller style blade. And this propeller blade works like if you put a cucumber in there all the way down to the bottom and you spin the blade, the blade will come around and hit that cucumber and chop a piece off and basically continue to chop it off until there's literally nothing left. And you can see a popular uh, series on YouTube, Will It Blend, where they blend up iPhones and all kinds of other things in the blend tech using that propeller style blade. Now on the Vitamix, we could take a look over here. This has a star style blade. So even a big cucumber we put in there, it might not actually fit between the blade. And what'll happen is the blade is just gonna spin around with actually out chopping the cucumber. Now one of these cucumbers actually might get chopped up, but something like this cucumber is very simple. He's just going to like sit on top of the blade and get spun around and not get, uh, you know, blended up. Whereas on the blend tank, we could put this in here and the blender will hit it up with these top pieces of the blade and then uh, continue to blend it up. So besides the blade design that we just saw, another element that may cause cavitation is the carafe design. So you can see this craft design basically is a square design. And this design is a fluted design or, you know, kind of square, but it has flutes on it. And it has these side flutes that may help the vortex. Basically, the blender works by sucking in air and creating a vortex. So liquids can be blended up. Now, it's not going to work for solids too well. Although if you do put some dried uh, flax seeds in there, it'll spin so fast, it'll powder up those flax seeds. And actually, you'll see the vortex created because the flax seeds are so light, they float on the air because this thing will pump out a lot of extra air and you'll see the flax seeds actually float on top of the blades to get, you know, blended up into a powder. So the craft design may play another factor on if cavation occurs or not. In my experience, uh, the Vitamix uh, blends up a little bit better because of the fluted design uh, in most cases, but in addition, because the Vitamix people know that their blade design has a star in it and it's maybe not quite as efficient as blending in the propeller blade with the cavitation, they include a tamper. So should cavitation occur with the Vitamix, you simply use the tamper. Once again, you can only use the tamper if you have the lid on and the tamper is going to go in there to help you push down uh, the items you're blending into the blades to get rid of the cavitation or the cavity that's formed thereby when the blender blends up more then the cavitation is going to be worked out and it may start blending again on the blend tech there is no pusher so the thing i could recommend is when cavitation does occur you have two options which uh, one is you stop the blender and then you take a simple spatula and you spatula down the sides of the blender and put it all down in the bottom and get rid of the cavity manually always do this when you're with your uh, blender turned off and take the carafe off of the blender to prevent you from turning the blender on while you have something in there or the top off. That's definitely not a good thing to do. So 
the other way you could easily uh, fix the cavitation is always add more liquids and there are special techniques you can use when blending whatever you're blending to prevent it from happening in the first place so the first uh, demonstration we're going to do is basically cause cavitation to occur so we're going to go ahead and put this uh, carafe on the blend tech and what we're going to put in the blend tech today are these lemon cucumbers so these are not lemons these are called lemon cucumbers actually they're growing on the vine right behind me you can see the beautiful yellow flowers and these cucumbers unlike normal long green cucumbers they don't have a bitter skin and actually they taste a little bit sweeter so i like them a lot so what we what we're going to do is we're just going to pre-chop these a little bit and once again that is one of the tips you want to cut things up into the smallest piece you can i mean you could sit here and dice everything up and that'll actually help you prevent cavitation from occurring but i'm kind of lazy so we're just going to chop it into uh, larger pieces and we're going to put a bunch of these uh, lemon cucumbers into the blender here and once again lemon cucumbers actually do have a higher water content so things without a higher water content and with a lot of fibers especially like if you're blending a lot of carrots up or squashes like winter squashes they're kind of really dry or beets they're going to tend to cause more cavitation because you're going to have to add more liquid on the other hand if you're blending something up like tomatoes or watermelons the exact opposite end of the spectrum watermelon has so much extra liquid in there it's insane so it's it's pretty hard to cause cavitation if you put watermelon in and you cut it in small enough pieces all right so here's some more cucumber now you can see we've added a lot of cucumber in there but once again you can see at the bottom there's extra air space now to ensure that cavitation does not occur you want to make sure you have enough liquid at least covering the blade if not higher so what we could do right now to assure that we prevent cavitation is add water but we're not going to do this until later because i want to show you guys what will happen if we don't next we're going to add some collard leaves to our mixture so we just got the uh, lemon cucumbers and you know we could put the collard leaves in there whole but we're just going to cut them up a little bit and once again the blender is meant for blending not basically blending up leaves like this so uh, if you are blending one of the techniques i like to use is blend up all your liquids first whether it's like your lemon cucumbers or tomatoes or things that are liquidy once that's going you got like a nice blender craft full of liquids then go ahead and add your solids such as your collard leaves in this case because you're going to see what happens with this so once we got everything in there always make sure you have the top on and in place and we're going to go ahead and crank this blender on as you can see, the blender's spinning, but nothing is getting blended up. So you would think, you might think, hey, that blender's defective, man. It's not working. It's not blending anything up. But that's because, you know, the blender's meant to blend. And there's too much, uh, there's not enough liquids in there for it to blend properly. So what we could do is we could go in and try to smush this stuff down and push it more into the blade. And once again, only do it when the blender's turned off and the blender is off the base Next, we're going to go ahead and turn this back on again. Now, you can see it's still just spinning around. It's not really working too well. And once again, that's because we don't have enough liquid. We could try to push it down again. But the easier way to do that is we're just going to simply add some water. So let's go ahead, add some water to the blender. Once again, this is a blender. <laughs> so we added some water to it. And now we're going to go ahead, turn the blender on. There you go. You can see the whole mixture blending up. I mean, after all, this is a blender. It needs liquid to work properly. So you can see the blender worked fine once we added enough liquid. So the next way we're going to blend without cavitation occurring is instead of using the water we're going to use a very liquidy uh, food and in this case we have some uh, organic sugar plum tomatoes so we're just going to put those in there and you can see the sugar plum tomatoes fill the bottom of the craft fairly well they pretty much uh, cover the bottom so if we put like one large tomato in this is not going to work as well 
So we're going to go ahead and put the top on and we're going to start this blender up. And first we're going to get this into a liquid. As you can see, it simply turned the tomatoes easily into a liquid. Once we have it into a liquid, then we're going to take the top off. And there's your liquid. I mean, that's pretty liquidy there. It's literally a tomato smoothie. Next, we're going to add some cucumbers. And this time, we're using some uh, Persian cucumbers. And I love these Persian cucumbers. They're nice and sweet. And once again, they don't have a bitter skin either. So we're just going to chop these up into fairly large pieces and put it in there. Now, once again, because we are blending and we're blending in a liquid already, the cavitation is much less likely to occur. Now, of course, the cavitation occurring depends on the amount of liquid in there and also the item you're blending. So there we go. We simply just put two cucumbers in there and we're going to go ahead and turn that blender back on. As you can see, no cavitation occurred because we had enough liquid in there to begin with. And now we almost have like a nice salsa. <laughs> nice liquid salsa there. So there you have it. You've just learned what cavitation is. It's when, you know, the blender can't blend because there's literally too much air space or an air pocket right where the blade is. This can't happen when you're doing frozen foods with ice. Basically, it happens when you don't have enough liquid. Vitamix, once again, has solved it with a tamper to uh, help tamper things in. Uh, you know, the other solutions are simply uh, take the blender off, push things down into it. The other thing, if things are stuck to the side of the blender, you could take like a uh, spatula. Once again, when the machine's off and the, the craft is off the base and uh, tamper down the sides and get all the stuff stuck on the sides back down into the bottom. That's another way you can do it to uh, prevent the cavitation from occurring. The other thing you could do is blend smart. So what do I mean by blend smart is... You know, just like I demonstrated, you want to do your liquid things first. So if you're blending a lot of, say, carrots and tomatoes, don't put all your carrots and expect that to blend up and then add your tomatoes. No, add your tomatoes first, blend that up, and then once you got the tomatoes into a liquid, then add your carrot pieces a little bit at a time or a lot at a time. And you're going to have to play with this. You know, when, when you buy especially a high-power blender, it's a brand-new appliance in your kitchen and you're not used to using it. So you need to kind of get to learn how it's used for the best results. So another thing besides the ordering of the produce you put in the machine is the speed you're using the machine. So instead of cranking it up to high and letting it run at high speed, at higher speeds, things don't generally get sucked down into the blender unless it's a really nice liquid consistency. So for starting out your blender, when you're blending something especially that's not in a liquid state, you wanna start off at a slow speed and slowly, gradually ramp up. The Vitamix makes that really easy with this speed control knob you could start off at low and slowly crank it up to high as things get moving and starts blending up with the blend tech you could do that with your s button which is a speed control button so you could crank it up to speed one or two let that run for a little bit then hold down the speed button more it'll crank up to a higher level maybe three or four let that run a little bit or the other thing on the blend tech which is nice they have pre-programmed buttons that'll actually automatically do this it'll actually start off at a low speed go up to a higher speed and then it even ramp up to a higher speed and then actually shut itself off. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode learning more about cavitation and how it occurs and why it occurs in the blender because you don't have enough liquids in the blender. So the three simple ways to prevent cavitation from occurring. Number one, make sure you have enough liquid in the blender, whether it's water or a juice, a vegetable juice or a fruit juice in with whatever you're blending. You know, that's the, that, that's the key, number A number one, the key. Uh, number two is the ordering of the things you're blending. So put all the watery things in first, such as the tomatoes before the carrots, such as the cucumbers before the beets, and blend that separately and then add in your leaves or whatever else you're going to blend. That's step number two. Number three is don't crank the blender up to high speed initially. Start on a low speed and then slowly and gently ramp it up to the high speed. And once you get up to that high speed, you're in already a nice liquid state and things are going to blend up really smoothly for you. So once again, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.